you know, like, Hello, everybody. Welcome back to uh, another day of streaming. Just the piece that I'm working on. Uh, I'm going to focus on these two hands. We're just going to get as far as we can. Um, kind of looking at the next uh, three to four hours and seeing uh, where where it all ends up. Um, so if you're uh, if you're joining us, welcome. Um, I've already mixed up some skin tones that I used yesterday. If you didn't, if you didn't get a chance, you can uh, drop in and watch me uh, paint uh, the face uh, yesterday. Uh, that video is available on my channel. Um, and uh, talking about having some dark uh, kind of skin tone values uh, with some variations, some mids and some lights. I'm just going to use those same pools. That, you know, I, I did all the energy of making them from my limited palette here, as you can see on top. And I'm gonna use those again today to uh, begin blocking in the hands. And um, yeah, so we're here, we're gonna do it. Thanks for uh, being present. And as always, you're welcome to drop a line uh, in the comments. Uh, got uh, Sean and David on the feed, so they'll be able to um, check in as well. So excited to, to have you, and uh, here we go. Um, to, to get things started here, I'm going to um, take a little bit of uh, walnut oil gel. And um, since the area that I've, I'm working on here is dry, and I'm just going to kind of rub this in a little bit, reactivate all those nice darks in the sleeve shadow. And uh, I'm just going to get everything nice and uh, just oiled out before I begin um, so that uh, when, I, when I'm applying uh, the paint, it just kind of goes goes right on um, and uh, feels like I'm, I'm working into wet paint rather than a dry surface. So uh, I've got I've got that in place now, and um, I, I've talked about it in previous videos too. But I, I tend to like to work from the darks to the lights. So um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. In fact, just last weekend I was doing um, a very different uh, approach. And, and that's that's okay too. I learned a lot from doing it, um, but I feel like if you know if if you're still a, a painter who's just getting started, uh, I think it's a good idea to work from uh, dark to light, uh, or set up a few kind of fixed points of value, um, and then begin working from those. So let's uh, let's get started. So I've got a little bit of my Chelsea Classical Studio Medium here. It's, uh, it's a lavender spike oil with um, linseed oil mixed into it. Uh, it's a great um, VOC free studio option. Uh, if you don't have a lot of ventilation, it's a way that you can still get some um, so a nice thinner that works a lot like turpentine and linseed oil, uh, like, like a mixture of that medium, but uh, it's not gonna fry your brain. And that's, that's a nice thing. It's good, you wanna, you wanna keep your mind if you, if you can help it. Um, so I've got my mixed black here, which is uh, burnt sienna, an ultramarine blue. Uh, I'm going to pull into that, um, and I'm going to get a little bit of alizarin crimson because this this dark in between the thumb and uh, forefinger is, uh, you know, as I'm looking at it, um, and you you can kind of see it too there in the source material. Um, it's really it's it's dark, but it's really warm too, um, and so I'm, I'm going to kind of keep. Uh, keep that as much as I can, uh, looking nice and warm, um, and and that'll only help. Uh, you know, if it goes all the way black, I'll lose some of the chroma and, and some of the feel. Uh, you know, and just looking too, there's always, uh, you know, there's some kind of uh, right now this thumb is looking a little dead, so I'm gonna have to reshape it as I as I work today. So you're gonna see how even. You know, with my initial drawing, I'll block in a few things, lights and darks, uh, but sometimes just weirdness happens. This is just kind of weirdly dangling there. And um, in, my, in my source, you know, she has a nice uh, curvature to the thumb um, and uh, just creating a little more uh, interest. So uh, here we go. So we got that uh, dark in. Um, I see a little more of that. It, anytime you have some uh, color on your brush and you see it appearing elsewhere, you know, you use that. Uh, so I see, you know, see that same really warm, warm red 
shadow kind of coming down here. Um, and maybe it just touches the edge here a little bit. I'm going to put that in there. Um, kind of looking around, seeing if I can find a find that a little bit. It kind of happens right here. And um, it's not as dark, so I'm going to take just a little bit um, of a lighter, warm kind of skin tone value to put underneath this thumb. And and this is going to be kind of a, the drawing as you go thing. And we'll see if we get it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So um, I, I'm going to start to kind of create some of that angle that I see in here. Um, there's going to be some other redrawing that has to happen, but um, I'm kind of looking at my shapes and saying, okay, there is, um, there's more of an angle right here and we're going to work to, you know, really uh, bring that into being. There's that cast shadow from that thumb and um, we'll uh, kind of continue moving on to the next area. So since I have this little bit of a lighter, warm uh, value out, I'll do the, do the same again. I'll, I'll just kind of look for a few more spaces. Looks like it kind of happens right here. Um, then and we'll get more specific when the timing is right. But you know, right now it's just a matter of finding a few of those spots. Um, this is probably not quite right, but I'll, you know, I'll carry it here, down here a little bit. Uh, maybe some right in there at the wrist. And just because uh, I, I want to kind of keep working on the drawing, I'm going to go ahead and kind of sketch in uh, this wrist bone uh, as, I, as I see it. That's going to be really fun to kind of get in there. Hey, uh, A72 is here. A72, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Welcome. And uh, as always, uh, feel free to drop off questions if you got them. And I'm going to kind of keep working around. These shadows, these cast shadows on this uh, white fabric, um, uh, you know, they're reflecting some of the skin tone, so they're, they're looking very similar. Um, this is quite, not quite as dark as I have it here. Um, but I'm, I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, kind of looking around, trying to find the edge. Looking at the edge of each of these fingers, you know, that's probably kind of a next darkest spot. Um, you know, she's wearing a nail polish, which I'm gonna just kind of work around. Uh, and it just looks, this looks a little cooler. Some of the lines that delineate uh, the forefinger and, um, and uh, the middle finger here. I'm gonna just be careful to kind of describe those, but not go too far. And uh, here it goes. I think it's a little, yeah, a little cooler. I'm going to pull into this pile, just a little cooler. And I'm just going to establish some of these lines, which you can see. Uh, we talked a little bit about this uh, yesterday, but my, my ground layer that I start on is this very color right here. So, uh, in fact, Sean uh, prepped this canvas. I've got another one if he wants to do it. I, you know, I, I didn't ask him yet, so. Um, is this I'll, your way of asking me? Uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> this would be. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <so subtle>. uh, <laughs> Is that the one that's up on the table right there? Yes. Already I, ready for me? I, I, yeah, I kind of uh, set it all out this morning. <laughs> all this stuff is yeah, right next to it. Yeah, ready to go. Right. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so, yeah. Uh, and, and so, yeah, Sean prepped this. So he, see, so this is beautiful. Look at this uh, great consistency that he toned the canvas with. I mean, just solid. I thought the other one was the one that I did. No, no, you've done, I think you've done them all. Did I? Yeah. Man, dude, life is weird. Yeah. Just awesome. like, You're just awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you, Sean. Yep. You're the best. I know. Uh, and um, I forgot how to do this. Yeah. Uh, just... Yeah. Put put a few. You can do it a couple different ways. Uh, you can put some in the middle, and then you could take uh, this palette knife. Uh, if I clean it off, that would help. Um, and you can spread it around in dabs here and there. Um, let's see, that's that's probably about good since we're just doing a wash. Um, you can take this, sp spread it out, you know, pick it up here, put it up there. 
um, and then you've got the thinner and the brush there. If you want, it's kind of sneaky how some of the I should have a we should have a camera on you, right? Um, it's okay. I'm not very good at this. Uh, and uh, the you might there is the I believe it's still over there. Um, I, I just don't want you to get too much splatter on your uh, on your shirt because it, it's kind of working with a big brush, a lot of thinner. A lot of times there's a little little specks that kind of uh, come up. It's okay, so. I got this shirt in rehab, so it's not. Okay, it's all right. Well, uh, maybe it is, you know? Maybe it's a uh, memory. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't want to, like, lose the shirt, but I also don't care if it gets... But I appreciate the offer. Um, okay, so I did that. And... I take the thinner. Yeah, and then, then uh, the just kind of dip, dip the brush in. Um, and just go for it. Yeah, and then kind of go for it. Yep, and it'll, it'll start breaking it down. Yeah, you can drip, drip a little bit off there. Yep. There you go. And just kind of start pulling it around until it smooths smooths out. And if you're like, whoa, I need to separate these piles a little more, you can do that too. Um, so, all right, so here we are. We got those darks in. I've, uh, Sean's being super yeah. kind and uh, allowing for more more flow of, of time uh, for me to be at the easel. So God bless him. That's what it's all about. Uh, and uh, let's see. So uh, I wanna be really careful with where I put some of these, because I'm, I'm drawing a hand, and as we all know, uh, that's why I put the little uh, scream emoji <laughs> on, on, the, uh, uh, on the, the thumbnail, uh, because, yeah, when it goes, when hands go wrong, they go really wrong. Uh, and uh, I have a drawing here that I'm satisfied with for the most part, and so I want to make sure that I don't uh, lose that um, uh, as I'm going. Now you'll hear the, the subtle back and forth motion of, uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like, a, it's kind of like a Zen, um, like, it's like you were doing one of those, um, sand rake, uh, exercises. Maybe that's what we should do instead of me using the music. Yeah. Just do a paintbrush. So the the paintbrush you're hearing is not mine. <laughs> I'm uh I'm I'm in full stealth mode uh, right now. Well, technically, it is yours. Well, no, I'm I'm not making the noise. I guess. Right, right. Yeah. The noise is yours, but the paintbrush. Okay. This would probably be a good time to, uh, while I'm not too far into it, to get really clear on what this uh, thing, this thumb is going to do. Um, so, she, you know, she, you know, when I'm looking back and forth. This this angle looks pretty good, um, but then you know it it curves in. That was probably a little drastic, um, but kind of curves in there, and, and comes back out there. We're going to put that there for now, and we will uh, see how it looks when we start to get some of the more light values in there. All right, kind of continuing to look around, find those next darkest elements, and I'm going to say, um, you know, I'm going to miss some as I go, so bear that in mind. There's going to be times where it's like, wait, you totally missed uh, a dark point there, and I'll have to say, yep, you got me. I, I did. Um, so here we are. Um, and I think the next darkest point is the, the finger that falls, the fingertip that falls into the light there. Um, and so, and then we just kind of, Sean, if you remember, I've got yeah, uh, the paper, towel. paper towels and yep, you're the man. Um, and, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be working on applying that next, and that is this area right here. It gets a little lighter. I I already have well I don't say I already have a brush, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go and use this one. Um, I've got some of these pinks. Add a little bit of it's really reddish. 
uh, that, that finger back there, it's not all that light. You know, it's, it's in the light, um, but you know, the light is just really decayed by the time it gets down there. So I'm going to start off by that, you know, and that's, as you can see, just a really simple shape. I haven't even accounted for the sh uh, shadow underneath it. Um, all right, so while I've got this on my brush, again, I'm going to kind of look around. Uh, probably the underside, I think, of this finger is, is about like that. So uh, I'll start immediately uh, putting this on. Kind of right there. Gets a little lighter on top. Why don't I go ahead and put that on um, so we can start to see what's happening down there. It's probably a little too red. And this is the nice thing about setting up the palette like I have. I felt like that's a little too red, a little too dark. So I'm going to pick one of my cooler, lighter colors that I already mixed up. And uh, we'll, we'll start here. I'll just see kind of how that ends up looking. Not bad. I think I'd like it to be a little bluer. So I'll, I'll dip into my, my, my blue. And you know, that's, uh, that's really pretty close. And I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to get that in and there's a few other little drawing things in there. I'll, I will refine. Um, but this color now I feel like makes up a lot of the hand that is, that is in the light. So I'll start adding it to the finger here. It's probably more the highlights for little, um, at this point. Um, yeah, it's a messy brush was making it a mess. Although I want some of that color for this, uh, um, for the area a little bit lower here, uh, where it is more red. And you know, if you're your Caucasian, your the fingertips are very uh, red, um, knuckles. Uh, there's a lot of blood flow, and um, you can uh, never go wrong going a little redder than you think. Um, when you're doing the, do the hands. Um, so, all right, I like that. I'm going to kind of keep working my way just with that index finger. Since I'm there, that's what I'm working on. And, you know, it appears to me that it's a little warmer here, but as it gets up into here, there's kind of a cooler area in this region. Um, it, these are these are slight slight changes, but they're good to note. Um, and I'm just going to dip into some of that blue. That was a lot lighter than I wanted. Um, and by the way, I make those mistakes all the time, and um, that's why I like I, I like to have so many kind of colors out, prepped, prepped and mixed. You know, this is like too blue, so you know I pushed it too far. Um, so I'll, I'll dive back in. Um, and probably I should really wipe off the brush because it's, it's really messy. Um, and, you know, even in this blocking stage, I'm thinking about um, following the form with my mark so that I am hopefully creating a lot of lines that look like this to each of the fingers because we really want you know we want the hand to come out this way so we're going to move the brush in this manner uh, in order to uh, achieve that get out a little bit of this kind of greener color across this part of the hand. Um, I just think it's a little cooler than the fingers. Um, and try to really get that. Yeah. Is this line on here? Um, is it a separation? Is it? Mm -hmm. It's like, you can see it? 
is it separated from the canvas or is it just a, a piece of like the linen weave? Huh. Uh, keep uh, waxing on and waxing off <laughs> for, for a little while and see if that doesn't do it. And you may be encountering um, just some of the, the weave may be bigger and that may be just what it is. Okay. Gotta start to get some of this thumb a little more. Feels like it's like a like a fold or something. Hmm. Interesting. All sorts of other things going on in the neighborhood. I don't know. Somewhere, someone's using some... Who do you think it is? I mean, I would have to... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's currently washing up a whole rug. Yeah. Mm. Yep, good times. Good times in, in the neighborhood. Full house neighborhood. Um, uh, yeah, so you, you might have noticed I just switched to a little bit of a more reddish because on this edge, I'm just watching it kind of get a little darker um, on, on the edge of her, her wrist. Um, I think I needed to draw that out just a little more um, than what I had it. I think it's a little more accurate. I'll try to avoid the watch band tan line. <laughs> There's a, a lot of a lot of things to dodge here and there. That's all right. Um, but it's nice too. I do see everything get a little darker around that edge. And you might say, well, what about all those other fingers? I don't know. I'm just on a tear right now heading this way. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to them. I'm kind of working, working, working out, uh, toward the the arm right now um which will okay i did it but there's this weird line on it okay all right i'm gonna inspect this weird line and see if you have any questions uh yeah yeah cool nobody's just there Yeah, no, it's okay. I should have done that too. But um, you can tell if you run like this, the paper towel over it, you can feel the Yeah, I think, I think that's a weave. That's a, like a linen weave. Yeah. No, this is great. Thank you. But how do, how do I get it to go in? Uh, I'll paint on top of it. So, I mean, there's really nothing we can do. It's just part of the linen weave. Um, it's part of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. Thank you, my friend. Mm -hmm. I don't know, dude. Yesterday there were like seven people. Not there ain't no one. All right. Uh, back on. Let's see. Do you want me to pour out this thinner? Uh, uh, no, just uh, close it up and I'll use it again. Do you want me to wash off this brush? Um, set it aside and I'll do it when I do all the others. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to wash my hands. Yes. So it's nice to have all the skin tone next to, I mean, this bright white fabric um, because this kind of shows you just how much darker um, the, the skin tone is com compared to, you know, this bright white. I guess it's, it's a lot darker. Uh, and so I, th I think, you know, as you're, as you're working, um, bear that in mind. It's, uh, you know, it's not always, I think the tendency is to kind of think 
this area needs to be lighter than this, or uh, a lot of times we're painting the things we think we see rather than, you know, what's, what's there and what's happening. So as, as best you can, always kind of return back to, you know, what, what am I seeing rather than what do I think I'm seeing? Um, it's hard to do. A lot of times I make mistakes uh, because I'm just thinking, oh yeah, I, 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 know, I know how that works, or yeah. Um, this, is, uh, this is how you depict this, uh, rather than just kind of pausing for a second and saying, oh, okay. No, that's how that is. Um, And just working away here. I think some of those spots. This is still kind of the block in phase, the tiling phase. And that's kind of why I left, rather than, you know, in some of the other areas, really building up the lights and the darks and to a, a, a loose underpainting, working my way um, from this. I mean, the value is very similar to what's already there. So you know, I can leave, leave that as it is. I'm getting kind of the edge of the thumbnail here. Describe that. I'm going to come in with the shadow on that far side. Um, so that I can see that my drawing a little better of the thumb. Though I have to get a little darker that to be the case. Because right now, it just it's, uh, it's not separating really well. Um, another thing I can do is I can take the shadow out a little bit. It's a little more red than I want. So I'll come back in with some of these complementary colors. And I can take that red right out. Um, yeah, and by and by complementary, I just mean uh, across. Uh, Cross from one another on the color wheel. If uh, you're not familiar with that term, it's kind of what it means. Uh, picture your color wheel, look directly across to the other side, and and if you just mix that color into what you're working on, you're going to neutralize whatever happens there. So if something gets too warm, too cool, you can just take the color across from the color wheel, mix some of that in, and uh, and have uh, good success and. And getting getting that more toward um, what you're looking for, what you're aiming for. There is kind of a dark line here that I want to really get in. Shadow's a little lighter. And that's kind of when I'll break out this uh, smaller brushes. Just to take a little more care. You know, and again here, I talked about this shadow being a little lighter. So I can lighten that up some here. Maybe not that light, but maybe so. Okay.
take a little bit. See, it's kind of maybe a little exaggerated there. Turn that down some. But you know, the, the shape of her thumb kind of comes out a little farther and then, then comes back in. Um, and since I'm using this to just kind of redraw it, you know, that was my goal here was. You know, I didn't really like the initial shape. It was just a little, little off. Um, and so it's not a problem to take a little bit and try to get that corrected. And here's a nice flexion there at the end of the finger. And even here we're getting some reflected light in this area. Yeah, I got some paint on the sink and I realized how oily the paint is. <laughs> so how do I get the paint off of the sink? Uh, you can use a little bit of this. Okay. Um, and then uh, just kind of wipe away with uh, yeah paper towels. happens and you, you know it when it happens too if you you know if you're an oil painter um, all of a sudden all this stuff is on you and you're not exactly sh sure where it came from or how it got there um, but um, it is all around that uh, nope never mind you're not Sean. No. Cricket's in here today. I mean, I sh we should probably do that with a thing or two. <laughs> Thinners, man. Thinners. Pink thinner. It's trying to wash oil paint off my hands and things. But then I used oil thinner. Well, well, I guess we'll just the three of us will talk, and and you and you can you can watch this video if you if you ever if someone ever does uh, later in life, then you know. So be a, a reminder of this moment. This is an amazingly satisfying thing to watch outside. Because <laughs> it's such a dirty carpet and it's just like clean. It's just, it's a rug. Yep. It's beautiful. So, so David's watching the, the neighbor clean his rug. I just dropped my brush. Um, I cleaned the sink. Yeah, Sean cleaned the sink. It's uh, pretty exciting around here. It is. That is a real dirty rug. But now I don't know if it's actually dirty or that's just um, the shadow. <laughs> I think it's actually dirty. I think it's actually dirty. Yeah, because the parts that he's got clean are like majestic in color. Bright. Bright. Oh, yeah, it is dirty because you can see now where he's cleaning the part that was. Wow. So. This so is he, like cleaning toilets. So, so this is what I. So I appreciate this because this is like. I, I'm, I'm getting to just imagine everything you're saying. Uh, and that's, that's fun for me. Hey, we have one viewer. Hey, welcome. I don't know who it is, but they're here and let's talk about a carpet. Just the four of us. Well, welcome. Welcome to the stream. 
you've got a question, you have a, an oil painter at your disposal, you can ask away um, any question, almost nothing off limits. So, uh, uh, why do you? <laughs> Why did you decide to do portraits instead of landscapes, or mostly still lifes? All right, so my uh, here, here's my theory on that, because um, you know I think about those things. I I do I you know probably as with most people I you know I love natural beauty, uh, I love being out um, you know uh, in national parks and you know it's great, uh, but. I am from Wichita, Kansas, and you know there there are some beautiful areas of Kansas, um, but frankly, in my immediate vicinity, nearby, I I don't have access to um, to a lot of things, and so I kind of feel like I gravitated toward the figure and still life because these were the environments that I could uh, create beauty in. Um, I didn't. I didn't have it outside necessarily to go to. Um, you know, I, I grew up. Um, you know, we we were fine, but uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, and um, and so like we we did some travel, uh, but not a lot, and so that that just wasn't uh, like high on our uh, priority list, and um, I didn't know that as a kid. I just you know I was a kid, and but. You know, even as I got to school, started doing college at Wichita State University, where I attended um, for, you know, a, a total of, I think a total of six years over the course of nine years. <laughs> um, I, uh, I just really got to working uh, indoors and working with the stuff that I had on hand. So yeah, that's. I think that's kind of why I do what I do. People rather than places. Um, that's my theory, anyway. It's a good theory. So why realism? Um. So so when I whenever I consider this question, I think there is a little bit of a moment of where I have to say, uh, why realism? Because it came naturally. Um, you know, there, there was a, a natural ability present and, and so since I could draw the things that I was looking at and, um, I, I just kept doing it. Uh, and, you know, there was times where, you know, I've varied it some and been a little looser, been a little tighter, you know, all that, you know, varies, but I think for the most part, um, having an innate understanding for you know judging distances and proportion and and things of that nature naturally lent themselves to you know painting what I saw and, and kind of working f more from life and naturalism rather than you know like say abstraction or uh, or other uh, art forms so yeah great question so I think so I think you know the whole like I probably never would have pursued it had I not already not already had uh, kind of gifting and, and, and innate understanding for it, if that makes sense. Um, when did you find out that you had a gift for it? You know I think uh, I think it's one of those things where I, I sort of always knew it. Um, I, I was. The class artist, you know, if I if there was a project, and I think a lot of artists understand this too, where, you know, you were just the kid in class who could draw, uh, and uh, and so you were always the artist. You were always um, the one picked in, picked for those uh, the artistic projects and and things. And David, I'm sure you can understand too. Yeah, we had an amazing artist in our class that got picked for all the things. Really? She was a prodigy. What, what's she doing now? She's a professor for biology and English. Mm. She's Canadian. 
We won't hold that against her. Is she in Canada doing that? No, she's in uh, Manhattan, Kansas. No, you say? Yep. Cool. She also owns a snake business. A snake business? And by she, I should say they own a snake business. Hmm. Fascinating. They... Um, boa constrictors. Ah. They specialize in boa constrictors. They do, yeah. Huh. A boa constrictor. So, would you say that that is like realism is your favorite style to view? Like, if you go to a museum or something, or like something that you're drawn to, is it always realism, or do you see yourself drawn to other things? Other yeah. Yes, mostly mostly realism because uh, you know there's just a, a great history of it. Um, but I can certainly appreciate and enjoy quite well, um, you know, certain abstractions and uh, and certain other you know conceptual work um, when uh, you know when I think the idea is solid and or uh, especially when it comes to abstraction or I think the the color theory behind it is sound um, and more, maybe more color field abstraction. And yeah, I'm on board. What would you tell somebody who's trying to find their style? Like how to, if they're good at several different styles and they just don't know what to like kind of stick with, hmm. what do you tell them to stick with? Um, I don't know that I would recommend anything, um, partially because I, you know, I have no idea what what they maybe really enjoy inside. Um, you know, there's different things that I I would say. You know, I like painting the figure more than I like uh, doing still life, but I make a lot of still lives uh, just because they're they're e they're easier. They don't kind of require as much setup or concept building um, so there's a kind of a directness with which I can create those images and I enjoy it very much even though you know if, probably if it were me I would just kind of continue to do the, the figure and figure and figure and you say well isn't it up to you and I'm like well yes and no um, and so but I think practicing um, uh, multiple uh, different forms of art yeah, invaluable. If you're, if you, if you can make an image that somehow encompasses abstraction and um, and, and a few other art styles in ways that are, you know that's beautiful and unique, and then yeah, you should you should do that <laughs> um, because because that's because that's great. Um, so all of my friends are artists. All the people that I care about deeply. They're mostly artists, and I'm not an artist. How would I become an artist? I think you... So I can fit in. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, I think you are. I, I, I know that uh, I've uh, said those type of things before, but I think you uh, you have creativity within you that is, is kind of waiting to... How do I awaken? Um, I don't know. I think you're, I think you're on it. You're starting to learn a couple of new skills that are allowing you to um, exercise those things, and like I don't know, I think it's kind of inevitability. But I think it's interesting how many different ways there are to be an artist. You know, I like words a lot. I like to write, yeah. and also like Photoshop and sending my cats to space, <laughs> and I have fun doing that. And then you know, David likes to give kids scavenger hunts and do things for other people, and Vince likes to do this stuff. You know, there's always something, like, I, I don't know, I always thought that being an artist was very, like, specific to a certain type of art, but I'm realizing the older I get that it's much more kind of up to the person and what they enjoy doing. And there's a lot of different ways that you can 
show creativity and be an artist. You don't have to just paint or, you know, do whatever. Well, I think you're beginning to experience that in, um, you know, kind of video editing and some of the digital marketing things you're working on. I think you're starting to kind of see, see some of that. I, I feel like, correct me if I'm, the thing that I really want to commit to, and I don't know how to do it yet, is like marrying like addictions therapy and digital marketing. Yeah. So I don't know how to be creative in a place like that yeah. while combining something as kind of abstract as addictions counseling or just addiction in general. Yeah. And kind of heavy, you know, some heavy and yet. Um, well, I think this, well, and this is probably, this sort of goes without saying, but there's, I feel like there's a lot of, uh, redemptive qualities with art, um, especially, you know, and, you know, some, some of the stories of addiction, um, you know, I feel like there's a lot of space for kind of yeah. art therapy and, um, I mean, it says, I mean, that's one of those interesting things. We are, of course, creative beings made to be kind of creative and use that, um, those capacities for good. And um, the more I think that happens, you know, whether we acknowledge God in it or not, or, uh, but we are, uh, yeah, we're, just, we're, we're, like, we're like living out what we were made to do. Uh, and, I, and I think that's why it can be just so helpful and some of the things that, you know, you're, you're considering how to, how to marry all those together. Um, I guess it's never too late. You know, I'm 29 yeah. and thought my life was over with and now I'm going to work to school and figure out who, I don't know, I really am. It's been exciting. Yeah, it's an exciting road. So hey, we were talking about a lot of good stuff there, but I'm all, you know, doing some painting here as well. Um, if if you're watching along and you're wondering, you know, what on earth you're doing or why this, why now? We've got two people. All right, good. Uh, and maybe people, maybe you're watching in the year 2025. Uh, After the world falls apart. Yeah. And it's like Mad Max. And and if you are, you then just barely found the I, internet connection. And, and somehow there's still a server, a YouTube, a, a, a Google server out there that still has right this up. on it. Yeah. Um, How can we save people in post-apocalyptic America <laughs> in a Mad Max-like situation? Mm. I uh, thought they would bring up a Google search for how to survive in the wilderness, but it's actually how to paint oil pans. Right. Uh, so if you're... In... I knew you were going serious with that, but I just I took that and I ran with it. My bad. So let's... No, no, no. It's all good. Let's run back. Let's do yeah, yeah. 2025. Look yeah, at so part. you're just kind of looking at this. Uh, one of the main, main things I'm trying to do is find the, the major color relationships and, and block those in here. So um, I'm not quite done. I really haven't done every part, but uh, I'm jumping around a lot. So, uh, and I'm, I'm a big proponent of that because I think sometimes you, know, you can get really um, locked in on maybe doing this one knuckle. And that's fine, but you know there's these others, these other areas. So kind of continue working into these areas. Yeah, some edges are going to be rough, like you know this one. I'm like, oh, I really need to kind of handle that edge or or knock that down, or figure that out. Um, and that's good. Uh, but it, but rather than kind of staying in one area, I'm, I'm I'm jumping around and trying to get uh, get this going. Now, amazingly, a lot of the value here. And some of these uh, spaces is basically the the ground layer for um, that was put down before anything else uh, by Sean, as we've already discussed. And um, that, yeah, and that was I could, you know, if I really wanted to be uh, really cheeky, I could just uh, leave leave that and not. Uh, <laughs> not even paint it and it would still read 
um, like I like I wanted to read. It's a little different color, but the value is on, and that's always that's um, that's the amazing thing about value. It's like you know, uh, it works like value, which is just dark and light. If you get your darks and your lights right, um, you know that's primarily how we read space. Um, and just the, I think the anatomy of our eyes. And so if you, if you get those parts right, you, you're good to go. Um, so it's just about understanding like perception. Yeah. So like, uh, one of the biggest things that tells us just this hand that I'm working on is this dark space in here tells us that, you know, something is moving into the space. Likewise, you know, this arm here moving into, uh, the fact that we know that this cloth is white, uh, because if I were to hold my skin tone up to a white cloth, I, I am darker. Uh, yeah, I'm just, my, my skin is darker than a, a normal white cloth. And so those sort of decisions, um, they're just naturalistic and we know them because we, we, we see them day in and day out. Uh, that, that sort of, um, and, and I think it has to do with our eye anatomy too, you know, the fact that even when it gets dark outside, we may not be able to make out many colors but uh, you know our rods are go are going, and we can see, we can still make out darks and lights, um, and it's just it's fascinating, um, kind of how that's the the most base uh, way to see. Um, so I'm going to try to get some of this reflected light on this finger that I'm seeing. I think it'll be important. Um, and so it's also about choosing the important parts and not focusing on things that are just going to waste time. Well said. I mean, uh, there are there's certain information that you know you can do without. Um, and I mean, even right now, if I unfocus my eyes and I look at the hand, you know, it, it's already working. The major players are are in place. Really, is just how much do I want to continue to refine it? Um, but right now, yeah, it's it's uh, it's working and it's doing its thing. And so, um, so you actually save a ton of time on a huge portrait like this by understanding the eyes and how they're drawn to certain things and what are the most important parts. Yeah, uh, that's I think it's a great way to great way to put it. Uh, yeah, I mean just knowing knowing that those important bits of information. Well, uh, we'll take you a long way. I just went through psychology, so I understand <laughs> the human brain pretty well right now. It was just 101, but still, I got an A, so <laughs> it was a really low A, but it was still an A. Hey, uh, you know, it's well done. Hey, that was my first college class I ever passed, and I did it with an A, and I wrote a six-page paper in two and a half hours. I'm really leaning into this whole college thing. Her thumb looks really long. Yeah. So that's a good that's a good note. So what what what, what will happen? Uh, what I need to do with that? And thank you for mentioning it because those are the things that I I, I like stop seeing after a while. Um, and what what I will do. And you notice I've not really made her thumb as wide as it is in the source too. So it's just kind of those things that kind of happens naturally. It's, it's bigger, uh, but it's just not uh, probably as heavy uh, as it is there. So uh, I think what's happening there, Sean, uh, is uh, like, for instance, this area right here, kind of that fleshy bit between, mm -hmm. um, I, I've just gotten a little too dark. So, you know, like if I consider this knuckle, and I look how I look at how far that flesh part comes down from that knuckle. It's you know it's about this, it's about this far. So you know if I if I take some of this skin in a little bit, um, and you know even bring it so that it wraps kind of bumps up against there like it's doing, um, it will it will begin to change the overall look and length of that. Also, um, I can see how much darker this uh, section is up here too. So if I address that, um, and again, this is all this is all drawing stuff. So the more I get the drawing correct, uh, the more you know it looks right. 
So you know this being kind of too dark here, um, putting this information in right here. I mean, that changed it, right? I mean, it changed it for me. Yeah. Uh, like all of a sudden, that that thumb does not look nearly as long. Um, and it makes more sense how it's like draped yeah. over that like fleshy part mm -hmm. than if like you know you open up your hands and you look at it extended, and how much different it looks. And so, like, so problems are always drawing first. So I, I think that's a that's a good thing to note. If if something looks funny, it's probably your drawing. Um, and then if it's not drawing, then it's value. It's that light and dark. Um, so it goes drawing, and then it goes value. Yeah, and then and then and then you have really, if you have good drawing and good value, you already have. 70 to 80 percent of a representational work's effectiveness um and so just i mean just consider that you know like overwhelming majority it's of it passing. yeah 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 uh and and so that's why it's like those are the big those are the big things those are the big important parts and as soon as you get those you know everything else is good and so so you know i could I can do little fun color subtleties, like make it a little cooler up here, which I, you know, I see that make it a little, or, you know, almost yellowy around the wrist. And then it goes back to warm here. And those are small, small adjustments and variations. I think that create interest, uh, in, in my, in the skin tones. Um, but those really are unimportant in comparison to getting that, getting the value uh, and the drawing. Um, and, and thanks for uh, making note on the thumb because those are those are the things that sometimes I just don't see anymore because I'm, I'm just, I'm in it, I'm in, in the trenches. And so uh, that's why, that's why I, I you know, I, I jokingly say, you know, if you're, if you're there and you're watching, you know, please leave a comment, question and so forth. But I also sometimes say leave a criticism <laughs> uh, because uh, if, if you leave uh, a helpful criticism, yeah, you don't want spaghetti fingers. Uh, the, the, the painting turns out better um, because I, I can't see. So that was one of the valuable things uh, last weekend uh, when I was at the workshop was just having, um, you know, really a modern day master who, uh, who I could have, him look at my work and I could just say, Hey, what's, you know, what's next? What, what, uh, what am I not quite seeing? Um, have him recommend it and I would adjust it and I'd be like, Oh wow. You know, that, that did make quite a difference. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I welcome the feedback and, and unless I'm absolutely, you know, convinced that it, and nothing is bugging me, um, you know, I'm usually asking David, I'm like, Hey, do you see anything weird here? Usually before the end, you know, the very, if, especially if I am seeing something kind of weirdish and I'm usually always asking him, Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> this is like, like the baby's face. <laughs> yeah. Like what's happening? Um, the baby's face that's right now. That was, yeah. that was one of the questions. I don't know about the baby yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and we, we may do some uh, color overlay and that may be a video too. Cause I, um, but we'll, we'll see. So what makes hands so scary? Is it just because of all the different values on it? Uh, it, it's, it's drawing, uh, drawing makes, makes them scary because, uh, if you don't draw them well, you end up with, uh, you, you know, that's the very thing where that makes figure painting so difficult is that, you know, we, we are looking at one another. Or we are seeing certain things. Uh, we're we're used to hands looking a certain way, faces looking a certain way, and when those are distorted, it's it's uncomfortable. Uh, and and so when when those sort of things happen, um, they usually happen in the parts that are most complex: the faces, the hands, the feet. Um, that's why you know you. You see a lot of, you see a painting of just one eye and well, one eye is no problem. <laughs> it's when you want to paint too, that, uh, it gets difficult or, 
you know, you'll, you'll see there's a, it seems like there's a lot of paintings out there, figure paintings out there that are like a torso uh, or, you know, someone's back or, um, and you're like, well, yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's kind of the easiest part. Um, and so when you want to get into some of these smaller details, you're going to be wrestling uh, and really coming up against like how well uh, was, is my drawing? How well did I do? Um, and, and that's when it, you know, can get. So is cloth really difficult too? Uh, not as, not as much because, um, you know, whether or not I made this fold just right, you know, no, no, no one no is going to know. No one's going to know. Yeah. And, and they're, and they're not going to care, uh, because where the, where are the eyes going to go in this painting? They're going to go to the faces, the hands, um, maybe the cloth as like a third, fourth option, but they're, you know, the, the eye just doesn't do that. Um, because we're, we, you know, we're looking for those, uh, those things, those human, uh, like signifiers. Uh, and, and so I, I just say all this to say, uh, you know, don't, uh, <clears throat> yet, you know, it, that's why it's scary is, is, is because you just never know. UPS. Where'd you get? I don't know. This could be my chair. See how big, see how big the box is. I don't know. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, box is huge. Is it? I don't know. I guess got David. <laughs> I, I, I can't see out of my window from my vantage point. Him up. Look at that rub. Super yeah. high. He's rallying for his chair and you said the box is huge. And you didn't even see the box. The huge is objective. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. So it is pretty fun. Uh, the, the studio faces the street. Uh, you know, there's a north facing window, but it faces the street. So. It has to be big. It's taking way too long. What kind of chair are you getting? Uh, I got a, a saddle chair. Uh, a two padded saddle chair that's supposed to make me kind of sit upright and uh, give me better uh, hip um, like ergonomics. So. Yeah, that's I, I'm I'm 42 and I've got to start thinking about those things. Vincent Williams says hi, Vince. Hey, Uncle Vince, good to see you, and um, I hope you're doing okay. Uh, I, 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 uh, I won't say anything more, but uh, so I saw I saw a Facebook pic that concerned me a little bit. So w wishing you well uh, from Wichita, Kansas. Hope you're doing well. Um, Wow, we're hitting. Oh, uh, he says, doing great. Good, good, good. I'm gonna go wait for the UPS thing and didn't take some nicotine. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. Ah, Ooh, UPS guys. Maybe it's in the... <laughs> back of the truck in a, in a, in a major way. All right. So, uh, so I'm kind of looking at this uh, drawing of this index finger and, um, I want to be really clear. No, that's not a chair at all. Okay. All right. Well, that's a bummer. Um, I want to take a look uh, really kind of getting each one of these uh, uh, phalanges. Is that right? I don't know. Is that, is, is, that, is that the name of each one of the bones, I think? Or... Uh, it's the name of the fingers and the toes. I don't know about the bones. So like, you know, here, here, and here. Um, and just kind of getting that those each of those transitions uh, going well. See, there's something to be said about pessimism and optimism. I'm more of a pe pessimist, so I was like, nah, I probably didn't get the chair. But then David really built it up that we got the chair, and we didn't get the chair. But 
you got this, and you got this. Um, okay, yeah, cool. I think that's uh, that's uh, the Halloween costume for Ernest. Um, Darth Vader. Yeah. Yeah. Ernest is choosing the dark side. The dar the the Sith Lord. Oh. What have you done to your son? I don't know, but that's it's probably a, that's a fair question. What do we all do to all of us? <laughs> Every yeah. child has trauma, no matter how good parents yeah. are. Yeah. There's a conversation. You want to have it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose it depends on if uh, everyone else wants to have it, too. Uh, yeah. There's four people here, and the only person that's kind of included is your uncle. Yeah. Oh. Um, we can talk about paper. Yeah. It's pretty deep. All right, so, you know, I'm. Uh, thanks for keeping me back on track, too. That's good. Uh, so, so I'm working slowly, trying to build up some of these finer details. You know, I've gotten out the smaller brush, um, and you know, I, I'm always a little hesitant uh, when I get to these points because I'm like, man, I don't know. Uh, really, like, if some of these transitions are are visible uh, over the live stream, um, yeah. yeah. And like if, if if it changes all that much when I when you know when I make kind of small edge decisions, um, but that's that's kind of where I, I you know I, I'm working toward as I as I'm doing this. There's this effort that's moving from the kind of big blocky pieces. Uh, so, so what some people call tiling, tiling out the major color and value relationships. And then coming back in for me, working in some of the edges, doing a little bit of blending if it's needed, and um, I'm just making making some decisions here and there. This uh, there's not really much of a, a shadow down here because of the reflected light, so I'm gonna make sure that I do that um, in this area. Kind of around here, and th those are the things that they do. They do really start to matter. Um, I don't like that as much. Then I don't have a shadow there. I don't know. I might put it back in. There you go. You don't have to. Even though, you know, to David's point earlier, why you know why realism? Why? I mean, I'm only so much of a realist because. There are decisions that are constantly being made that um, uh, have nothing to do with what I'm seeing and uh, what I what I think it ought to look like. Um, How long can you get stuck on like one hand? Uh, well, uh, how long have we been rolling this one? Um, yeah. One hour. For an hour. Eight minutes. Yeah. Um, that's that sounds about right. I I feel like it's uh. Like if you're working on a hand for longer than an hour, then you're probably stuck. No, I, I would say if I'm working on it longer than two, I'm probably stuck. Um, two hours for one hand. Yeah. Jeez, uh, we're, we're making some good good progress here. I'm I'm pleased with with where it's at. Um, hey, David, you just, yeah. Uh, just take over. <laughs> What is it? You want to share? It's a red scarf for a thing that I will not be for this Halloween. Oh, well, maybe next year. Maybe next year, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you'll want to wear that red scarf uh, this winter. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, uh, can I say what you were going to be? Yeah. David was going to be Mr. Tumness from the Chronicles of Narnia. And was gonna build a, a a trunk for our trunk or treat at our church, but didn't uh, d didn't pan out. Not not a lot of time left before it, and um, you know I, it happens. I didn't even pretend that I would come up with anything. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I always want to. Uh, I just basically have an excuse to 
dr dr dress up uh, and, and be crazy in a mask where no one knows me. So it's an exciting thing. Do you want to discuss what trunk or treat is? Uh, I'll, uh, if, if anyone really wants to know, if you're just dying to, you know, you, yeah, head out to your, your favorite search engine and, uh, and, and, and take a look. It's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. Trunk or treat, but it's trunk and treat because the treats are in the trunk or by the trunk. Usually people yeah. dress up there. That's fun. My, uh, my kids love it. You know, they love being able to... Yeah, two years ago, me and David and his brother did Super Mario. Yeah, he was Luigi. And that was a lot of fun. It was Mario. Yeah. And then I was... George Yep. <laughs> I was a Yoshi with, um, with Toad riding him. So I wore the Yoshi costume, like... Put it down? Yep. And then last year we did up, and I got COVID. Uh, yeah. But it's fun. That was a year ago, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, the the year COVID streak of, I mean, they were coming up on a year on that. Yeah. Coming up on a year and a half. Flatten the curve. It's been an interesting season. Dude, we have zero drop frames. That's amazing. Like literally zero. <laughs> like, uh, so, uh, if, if, if you're wondering where, where I've been for the last... Uh, you know, m month. Yeah, well, more than that. I think it's probably almost like 45 days. Uh, and why even I came back and I didn't do any more streaming from all my, you know, travels was uh, we were just having like the worst uh, experience with our internet service provider um, and them kind of passing the buck and saying, no, 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 the problem's on your end uh, with, with your uh, materials, even though, you know, I... I I had a little bit of a feeling that maybe there was some problems on down the line, uh, possibly off of my property. And uh, so, you know, th there was no way we were streaming successfully, considering, I, you know, I would lose internet connection altogether. One of the favorite things my kids uh, are still asking me is, Dad, d do we have internet right now? <laughs> <laughs> like, because that was the conversation. Hey, can we do this? I'm like, hey, I, you know, I'm sorry, we we don't we don't have internet right now. Uh, so right now, it's funny, you know, they'll come in here because he wants to get on the computer, and he's like, do do we have internet? Um, six. So yeah, yeah. Um, and when I was six, I don't even remember what I was doing. I was digging holes in the front yard. Well, I mean, he still does that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not all about internet. It's just it's yeah. interesting how much internet means to everybody now. Yeah. He's been uh, making uh, characters uh, on a website called Hero Forge. You can make your own little uh, miniatures uh, for, uh, for various tabletop games. And um, he's, uh, you know, he's discovered that, you know, there's just all these options uh, to, to kind of create with and it's been fun to see. He's really liking the uh, the dragon person. Yeah, yeah he's like his dragon go to. Born. Yeah, going to his dragon. I mean, I made a dwarf, so that's 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 my speed. I chose the dragon before Ernest chose the dragon. Yeah. So yeah. I'm the OG dragon. Well, you and you're also Uncle Jesse, so you know, like you're cool, and mm. and he thinks you're cool. No. Mm. Yeah. What does that mean? He thinks, thinks of me. You're tall. tall. You are the tall one. He's like, that is true. The biggest, the biggest in the house, but not the biggest in heaven. 
<laughs> that, that was that was a tabletop uh that was the the, the breakfast table discussion this morning <laughs> the david is the tallest in the house but not the tallest in heaven yes yeah yeah, yeah. so god is taller than him yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but how much taller like, we, we we didn't really go into specifics oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense i don't want to be hurt by how tall she thinks god is oh this is mira yeah oh mira is she at school yeah, well, uh, nope, she, her, and uh, Anna, my wife, went, uh, they got to go to Target. Um, yeah. And that'll do it each time. Mira's so. always looking forward for Target. Yeah, wants to be at Target. Target's a pretty cool place. Do you think they'll pay us for this name drop? This episode is sponsored by... Oh, that's right, yeah. Target. Can you see that? Target. I don't think you can see it. I think it's like he's a kid. I didn't say Target. You just did. No, I said Target. <laughs> I, I, I think we'll be, uh, I think we'll be okay. Uh, you know, I mean, I think we'll be alright. This program is brought to you falsely by... <laughs> this program was not brought to you by Target, but we're talking about Target. So you're welcome for the free advertisement. You, you didn't. You didn't. Like a gift card or something. You didn't. Yeah, fifteen dollar gift card. That's fine. Fifteen. Uh, well, look. I'm. One hundred and fifty thousand dollar gift card. Well, you know. Uh, you start, I'm oh, trying to be reasonable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not reasonable. Yeah, just imagine if this, you know, gets super popular and somebody listens to this video. That, that's yeah. And they're like, hey, I'm gonna go to Target. Yeah. Yeah. And then go to Target. I, I want to look at Elsa dresses at Target, because that's what's happening. Do you want to look at that? Uh, that's what my daughter's doing right now. Um, yep. How many Elsa dresses do they have at Target? Uh, I don't, they've been I, gone for like hours. I, I, don't, I don't think there is an end mm. to the possibilities uh, on that one. Mm. This is very popular. popular. And will continue to be. I don't... I don't see what what uh, what at this point I mean you have to really do something to dethrone Elsa yeah. Moana tried Moana did not get the love that I think was Moana's due it's great one. that's a great one I love it also sponsored by <laughs> Disney Disney <laughs> I'm sorry about all the good sponsors so if you want to, so if you want to send us, uh, you know, uh, a 50 year, I'm, I'm going big, a 50 year subscription to Disney Plus. Then, wow. You know, yeah. Well, I, I was going to say one year, but I thought about, I thought, I was thinking, I'm going to think like Sean. There you go. Might as well. Go big. The rest of my life. Look, that's how I do it. Look, I shoot really tall. Didn't you just say. And if people come back to compromise, it's still way bigger than I didn't deserve. Didn't you just say you're the pessimist? Yeah. When it's realistic. <laughs> And the optimist one is unrealistic. Okay, I you know I think this is just about uh, done here. I don't know how much more you know I really want to uh, get on here. Um, so I, I will take uh, get this little my buff what I call my buffer brush, and um, I'm I'm gonna start from up here, and I'm gonna start kind of following and making these contour line strokes. Um, because I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm there with regards to uh, all the color. I'm kind of happy with how it's going, um, and then I'll continue to do that around this wrist, and you'll just see I'm just kind of pulling, pulling that around. And whether whether you realize it or not, those strokes, our eyes are picking that up, and we're, you know, and seeing the lines do this on this hand, it makes it come forward. Um, and so I'm going to kind of keep doing that motion uh, all the way across here. And then even then into each of the fingers. Um, and you know, I've got some kind of thicker paint here. I, I want to leave it a little thick, so I'll, I'll tr not uh, try to knock it down too much. Um, And just really kind of soften this out. 
Were hands like the hardest thing that it took for you to learn how to do? Uh, they're, they're pretty tough. Uh, and I mean, even it's, you know, it's funny if painting people ever got easy, I probably wouldn't want to do it anymore. You know, uh, you like the... yeah, the, the, the challenge is kind of what makes it interesting. Mm. Um, because wow, it can go south. <laughs> uh and you know sometimes it does uh and and then other times you know you're you're like i don't know what was in the water today but you know i i could i could do no wrong well, like um, a week ago nobody knew what was in the water yeah we had a big water main break here boil in wichita in yeah we had to bo water boil for a while i'm pretty sure i kid you not i i didn't know that that had happened, and I drank quite a bit of water. No, yeah, I was I was at CrossFit. I didn't know that I did CrossFit. <laughs> I I don't know if it was related or not, but I, you know I did have some digestive issues. Uh, yeah, I drank like two big bottles, and then they were like, "Oh, there's a water thing," and I'm like, "Oh, yep." And then that night, thanks for letting me know. It's, it was worse than usual. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. But the hand looks pretty good. I feel you. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I like it, and it's kind of a a weird angle on the hand. So sometimes that that's intimidating as well. Like, ooh, how's this gonna end up? You know. Um, so that only took you an hour and twenty two minutes. So so there you go. We didn't uh, we didn't get too bogged down. Yeah, that's all right. I, I think I think I'm good with that. Uh, I think I'm happy with this, and we're gonna kind of switch over, take a little jump, and work on this one a little bigger. Um, so again, just depends on how much you know I allow it to uh, focus on. Uh, yeah, like am, am I gonna really get down and detailed? Or will I, excuse me, um, yeah, or, or will I stay loose and quick? Um, and, that, and, and honestly, what takes the longest is if I don't really get in there and lay, lay the important information in and, and just get it done. This, so you, like last time, um, this is kind of like beginning a new painting. Uh, beginning a new section and I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm saying all right uh, if I look at the picture and I kind of unfocus my eyes or I squint squinting is another great way to do it uh, but usually I just I close one eye and unfocus the other one it's really strange I know um, but it allows me to see what's happening so there is this huge amount of light uh, you know, this is really bright right here, and then it just drops off as it goes. So there's going to be this overall gradation that happens. That's going to be key. Uh, there's a few dark points, but I don't see a single place that is truly, you know, black. Um, or like what I would consider to be the darkest dark. So, I, you know, I think that's good. All right, like the last time and the time before it, and every time I'm working on the final color layer, I like to take a little bit of walnut oil gel. Um, and I just like to kind of rub it in because I and primarily I want to rub it in around the areas that I'm going to be working up next to that way I'm working up next to oil um, in my edges and also I'm seeing um, this dark value right here that I wouldn't see and you can see the difference you know oiling out brings back the oil color that it had before it, it dried and turned matte um, and that's why at the end everything will be varnished and you see those great so all those great varnish videos uh, on uh, Instagram and so on and so forth where they pour the varnish on, yeah, on this YouTube channel. yeah that's right we have our very own um, and uh, so yeah you can learn all about varnishing uh, here on my channel too if you'd like it's like Christmas yep it is like Christmas and so I'm, I'm gonna slowly kind of work around these areas I don't want to completely lose some of my my drawing. You know, I had I used a white charcoal. I don't want to rub it out too much because I like to keep um, some of that in play. And...
Okay. All right. I think that will do it. Give this a little bit. Um, this is a moment too where sometimes, like if I want it to get it done a little faster, I could switch up to a bigger brush. I've got a lot more real estate here than this one. Um, and so I might do that. So I'm going to take a, a 10. This is a Utrecht series uh, 239, excuse me, here, uh, 239. And uh, it's a mixed synthetic. It's the brush. It's kind of my brush of choice. But also I'm working on a, a fairly flat surface. There's not a lot of tooth to the canvas. It's a linen. It's a very fine grain linen. Um, and so this is really helpful and kind of a, something that doesn't have as, as much tooth to it. So we're going to use that. But before I do that, I realized I should just lay in the little bit of uh, dark that I have, um, that I do see. Like between the fingers? Yeah. No. You know exactly where I'm going. Um, <laughs> so kind of going to just drop some of those, I still see it as very red. Um, and, you know, perhaps around here. And uh, just s secrets, secrets uh, revealing time. Uh, this is my, uh, this is my hand that I'm painting. So if I don't know it, then I don't know what to say. What do you say? You know it as well as you know the back of your hand. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I, I was like, are you going to breathe? <laughs> That's your hand? That's a good looking hand, bro. Oh, thanks. It's a painter's hand right there. It's, uh, it's lefty. Lefty is, uh, does really really nothing <laughs> sorry it's even more delicate yeah uh breakable frail you might say <laughs> man that, i mean you got some little bit of muscles big knuckles going on there oh yeah knuckles yeah, yeah. looks like you can withstand some i make resistance. it give uh give someone a little bit of uh something a little bit of the a little one to the one one of the two i mean if you can count can get there. <laughs> uh, that's hard. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll remember that. Is that usually how you go? You do the darkest and then you do the lightest? Oh no, totally different. Um, yeah, so this time I just thought, you know, I'm going to start from the light and I'm going to just kind of work on this overall gradation, block it in, and see. There's just, sometimes it makes no sense. Why did he do that? I don't know. Just kind of, kind of, I kind of felt like uh, that was the way to go this time. That's okay. I just didn't understand it. I'm a hard one to understand it. sometimes. Well, I don't understand a lot of this. I'm very naive about most of this. Uh, uh, and I think uh, that is a, uh, that's a really fair question because, um, you know, I, I was at a workshop where the way I worked at the workshop was I don't paint that way. Um, and not that it's, there's, it's not right or wrong. Uh, I just don't work that way. And so um, I had a friend ask me yesterday, uh, hey, well, is it, what's the purpose of you, like, you know, you have your method. Why? Why would you do anything different? Mm -hmm. Don't you already kind of know what to do? Don't? Aren't you already a professional painter? Uh, to which, you know, I was like, oh, you know, no, no, no. It's like it's, it's really that kind of the wrong way to think about it. Um, it's uh, it's like it's kind of like the old adage. Um, uh, I'll, I'm gonna butcher it, but it's like, you know, the moment you stop learning, you stop leading. Uh, so if you're you know, if you're trying to leading an organization or you're leading people, you're trying to be the best at what you're doing, kind of the moment um, you stop learning, it's kind of the moment that uh, uh, you're just not going to, you're not going to progress anymore. Hey, that's, 
I mean, that was spot on. Pretty good. Just word for word. All right. The moment you stop learning, you stop leaving. Oh. So you did not put your. Um, so, so like really valuable to like switch up my process entirely, um, just for three days. And, you know, I, I learned that I, I'm going to pursue that again. Like, uh, what the, th some of the things that I did there that I don't normally do, uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of put into my practice. Um, yeah. But you're not going to do it on this set, right? So not on this set because I've I've been painting these in a certain way, and I will con I will finish them that way so that there's consistency. Would you be willing to share of your new things that you're going to do, or are you going to wait? Um, in in some to some degree, they're 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 no different than <laughs> some of the other like oh. still <laughs> still. Did you get hit in the back of the head? No, I did one time with I David. Hated. David David like. <laughs> I mean, I felt something weighty <laughs> hit the back of my head one time. Ew. <laughs> Is that while you were at the easel? Um, uh, no, I was working on the computer there, yeah. where you are. Oh. Yeah. And David was just yeah. up in elevation like he is right now. Yeah. And it all came down on it. Like, Gross. I mean, hey, there you go. There's your, there's your uh, health service announcement. Hey, we just got a second like. All right. Hey, thanks. I guess people want to hear about the gross stories that we have. <laughs> oh. So, cool. technique, new technique. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Um, I'm. Uh, I, I. I don't know how much I will. It's. It's not unlike uh, if you've watched any of my other still life videos. So you know, there's a few videos here on the channel of me just live streaming the still lives that I'm working from. Um, not, not a lot different. And um, uh, of, of a process. Now, uh, I've, I've said during this video, you know, hey, you know, if you're, if you're new to this, uh, you should try to work from dark to light. Uh, the, the process of, of this artist, uh, Michael Shane Neal, who I studied with, uh, you know, his process was working from the middle. Um, and uh, so kind of putting a lot of middle values in and then working outward toward your, uh, toward your lights and your darks. Again, no right or wrong way, but I, what I could see is the value of, of doing it that way after doing it, um, after, you know, actually practicing it for three days. And, and to me, that was what was exciting was like, um, um, I, uh, I saw the value of doing it that way because I wasn't making hard drawing decisions. Um, first I was kind of drawing as I went and everything was adjustable as I went. Um, and, and to me, that's where the value uh, came in. And, uh, and so I think if I, the next time, that, that will always be my approach when I'm working on a portrait from life. Um, the, the portrait from life thing, um, I felt like was really really good uh it, it that process which is his you know which is what he does uh portrait painter uh really benefited from that approach um so that uh, and a little different maybe kind of hard to imagine me just talking about it abstractly like that um but yeah good stuff it was great uh i learned a lot it's valuable Okay, got the little wrist bone in here. Put that line in. You can start getting some the form, watching it turn from there. So the arm. It's a little darker than I have it there, but I like kind of like this color. I think it's fairly accurate. 
Remember, if you've got it on your brush, use it everywhere you see it. I think I kind of even see it maybe a little bit in this middle finger here. Look at that, this brush is perfectly the right size <laughs> for finger width. Um, I didn't plan that. So I need to darken this a little bit, so I'll hold in a little bit of a darker value. Kind of continue to work around the wrist bone. Um, so that the, this is maybe a good conversation that the client, uh, as we were talking about, um, uh, how to select the imagery. You know, what what was I going to use? Um, how were some of um, the characters going to be depicted? Uh, you know, these are the conversations that you have um, when you're working on a commission. And uh, they, they really cared about how uh, Joseph, which this is Joseph's hand, um, at least in the narrative, obviously, I already gave away the secret that I was, it's your hand. I was involved. Um, but it's not my face. So that's what the, that's the fun thing about uh, all this is you know I don't I don't have to show up because I can use someone else's likeness um, but I can use my hands I can piece these together and and maybe just maybe um, I was thinking about this I might not live stream it because I don't know how long it'll take because it might be need to be edited but um, maybe. Uh, Throwing in a video of just the composition building process, the digital building of the composition. Um, would, I mean, would that be valuable? I think. Anybody? No, I don't know. Probably. Um, it, because, uh, you know, I'm piecing the other hand ahead. But but as I was as I was saying, they what they desired was uh, a Joseph who exuded strength. Um, you know, there's times where he's depicted as an older man, and I'm not sure historically what's accurate. Um, but uh, you know, they wanted him to have more strength, and so you know, this arm I wanted to be kind of very heavy, almost. Uh, like uh, Michelangelo's David, you know, heavy. It's really heavy and weighty, kind of almost structural as it kind of comes down here and uh, touches the manger. Um, and those are those, are those decisions uh, that you, you kind of make in your, um, and, you know, how, how do I communicate this, you know, <laughs> sorry, without making them totally jacked. <laughs> Like muscles, muscles, well, you know, blowing out uh, his tunic <laughs> and things. So it's like no, like there's there's other ways that are you know beautiful and subtle, and you know it's got kind of the difference between, you know, uh, how to communicate strength, um, and uh, to do so uh, with either a little bit of exaggerated size. So, yeah, her hands a little farther back, but if you compare the size of these hands. It's a little intentional that this one is really bigger and exaggerating uh, this this space. Um, you probably didn't think about that until I mentioned it, um, but those were those were some of the things kind of floating around in my mind when when I was working on it. It's like how, how does this how does this become strong, um, you know, structural, and uh, yeah. Well, I gotta go work on some work. Awesome. Hey, Sean, thanks yep. for being here. Thanks for prepping that canvas too. Word. Because that's the next one. I also gave you a like, so one hey. of your three likes is mine. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, do what I can.
Bye. 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 Do you want me to close this door? Uh, yeah, please. So my shadow's not quite dark enough there on the arm, um, but uh, we'll get there. You know, I'm still trying to find some of those spaces. You know, I think like, you know, this might be a good spot for that color there, which you know is really hard to see against the value of the under painting right now. That's all right. You know, again, I kind of feel like this comes down a little bit here. Might not be as warm as I have it. David would be so kind to periodically yep. take a look. Thanks. Doesn't have to be, you know, all the time, but yeah. So David's on the watch. If you've got a question, please drop it off. Be glad to answer it as best I can, if I can. Test me another uh, knowledge if you want. I don't know how. I don't know how I'll fare. But. I definitely wouldn't um, win as much as uh, the the Jeopardy guy of late. How many wins has he racked up now? How many how many wins has the latest uh, Jeopardy guy racked up? I think he's like. I think he has over a million dollars, uh, but then also I think. I think last time I read it was in this upper 30s, maybe near 40 wins in a row. Is he like going until he loses? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how Jeopardy works. You're, you're kind of dethroned uh, when uh, when you lose, but then you, you keep returning um, if you win and you just keep uh, racking up uh, those uh, sweet, sweet winnings. Um, yeah. I needed to darken that edge a little bit and as you can see that got a little darker and now we're getting some nice uh, and kind of curvature there uh, around uh, the, the forearm. Mixing up a little bit of uh, kind of a dark neutral to fill this out, hide the ground layer. Probably needs just to be a little darker than that. Soften that edge, you know, that shadow edge, just a little hard right here. I'm not sure if it's on the camera exactly. Yeah, it is. Um, sharpen that or lessen that. It was a little, felt a little harsh. Again, a very intentional decision to really round this. Um, you know, in the source material, you'll see it's much more flat. Um, and I'm gonna always exaggerate some of these contour lines 
so that it really feels like there is, you know, coming down from this way, uh, you know, from back here, traveling all the way forward, you know, coming toward us. You know, those are really important decisions to make. Those, those lines, uh, you know, the drawing sort of tells us where and what is happening. Really important. Okay. Like and how that's looking so far. And you can see this time I, rather than kind of working all the way back and in, down into the fingers, I've started really starting here. Um, I want it to feel strong and solid as it comes through down here, and slowly start making some of the uh, value decisions um, in this region. Too reddish, but no, I think that could no, that's too much. So these too too dark. So we're gonna kind of lighten that up a little bit there. But the more I uh, kind of exaggerate some of this movement, we can really make this finger go down, this finger sit here, this finger sit here, depending on the angle of the light. Um, so I'm gonna pay close attention and maybe even exaggerate it just a tad uh, to achieve um, the, the look that I'm really wanting to, each of those to feel like they're sitting in that light. Midday. Midday, feeling a little sluggish. Didn't sleep too hot last night. Yeah, last last night was a was a two a.m. wake up. Uh, our son had had a had a bad dream, you know. And if only uh, you know the comfort that we offer in those moments could continue to extend into their later years. It won't always be uh, just a parent's presence in the middle of the night when. When things are frightening, they can bring peace. My present won't, presence won't be enough someday, you know, but now it is for the moment. that's kind of that's that's good enough to move into this area and uh, continue kind of blocking in um, 
I just wanted to spend a little more time on that. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. In fact, I think you can see you can see my terrible Photoshop job, uh, which is the uh, the hand. Um, you can see that that really hard edge, <laughs> um, and that's kind of how I piece some of these together, trying to pick the best pick pick the best parts uh, as I go. Um, all right, dipping back into my medium. Um, if you weren't here earlier when I had, um, David, do I have a, is there a comment there? I can't tell. Uh, hello from San Diego. Hello, hello. Um, dipping back into my medium, uh, lavender spike oil from, uh, Chelsea Classical Studio. And, uh, I'm gonna get back into trying to describe each of these fingers in turn. Um, Feels a little redder here. Uh, it's kind of fun. This brush is like perfectly the size <laughs> of the finger. Um, it's a little more of a highlight on it in here. Has a nice reflection on the fingernail. That's gonna be that's gonna be fun. All those uh, those reflective highlights. Always fun. A little more redder in the knuckle. Um, and even in between here, you know, this is trying to block in that a little bit. Again, kind of redder in the knuckle here, especially uh, this middle. That's that's way over the top, but we'll we'll tone that back down. But um, a good uh, a nice exaggeration for the moment. Um, then probably just this sort of skin tone in here feels pretty it's not all that red it's a little, a little cooler so i'll dig into my my greens um like that like it just goes there and then this is the one that really starts to get sh uh, shaded and heading back into space um, Making these uh, decisions now and then, seeing that this edge is not quite dealt with. Looks a little red to me, um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put that in, um, and then a little bit of kind of a cooler, bluer, sort of a light up here. Uh, no, you know, and here's here's some decisions. You know, do do I do I include some of the, you know, veins in the hand? You know, those those are uh, great big questions. Like, how you know, how much detail do I need? Uh, and one of the decisions I like to make is if I unfocus my eyes and I look at it. If I can make out like some of that information, I will most likely put some of it in. So uh, I do see some, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go there. Uh, this is nice and these get nice and red, you know, red as they get down to the bottom here. We'll have to get more specific. Um, this is probably again a little too strong, but that's all right. We'll 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 back off from there. That's a lot darker down into here. This one. And then a little more light. 
light on this plane right here and you know at that point that kind of puts I'm gonna use this moment to chill that out a little bit use it's on my brush that red out a little bit all right let's take a look at the thumb Still trying to bounce, bounce around and stay, stay even. Not let any one spot get too, um, too focused on. Yeah, very, very red. These fingertips can always lean into, um, you know, this redder, ruddier. Uh, fingertips when you're working with the Caucasian skin tones. Okay. Um, now we're gonna. I'm gonna just take it a finger at a time, uh, and I'll probably get distracted. So we'll see if I if I if I truly do that. Um, but. Kind of the major tiling has happened, so I can start to make um, some informed decisions. I'm gonna get out and find a brush that's just a little smaller. Um, still will allow me to kind of block in a little bit. So I've, I've picked out uh, Utrecht uh, 239 Mix Synthetic. Uh, this is their number four, which is really quite small, but this will allow me to have a little bit of an edge. This is the flat. Uh, this will give me a little like an aligner when I need it, and then I'll use the, the flat edge when I need to fill in a bigger area. So just looking at the thumb, um, you know, I had a, a really bad Photoshop back behind there. That's more skin, probably my other hand at some point. So it's creating a little more of a bump there, which I, I don't mind. It, I think it gives a little more width, makes it look a little stronger. Um, and as stated, the, the client desired um, this Joseph to have a little more strength. So uh, I'm gonna. I'm going to use that. I'm going to just push that out just a little bit. So again, a, an unintended accident that I think creates a little more uh, of, a, of a stronger hand, not the uh, soft hands of uh, of uh, of a painter. My my. All right. Um, so I'll start there. I'm going to come in with my liner, just a little liner brush, and uh, I'm going to establish some of the, you know, there's really warm, dark there underneath the bottom of the thumb. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is not the way anyone has to work. I'm just going to try to work this way uh, to, to get each section you know to to about the point uh you know that that i that i want um, you know and even though i'm working you know i've kind of already done the background sort of first um but i'm so probably gonna have to make some adjustments and some small bits of painting here and there to make that work So it's good then to have another brush around to achieve some of that. Let's see if I can find that color. No, that's that's pretty close. So that's coming up against there. It's cast shadow from the finger. It's a lot of reflected light um, underneath that thumb. And and then even 
on the top here, this kind of try to knock that down some. These are little little drawing changes that you know are are good. Um, so that I'm getting a little more more of what's there. Um, also creating a little bit of an edge uh, that, that works together. I'm trying to decide on the on the next painting. Um, uh, it's going to go kind of like this. I, I never know how much people really want to see or watch. Um, some of the backgrounds and things are pretty boring uh, at times. So, uh, you know, I, I did, I think, I think with the Annunciation, which is the first painting of this series, um, I largely did the, I think I did just about the whole thing online. Um, so I think those first few days were pretty boring with the underpainting and the background. Uh, and these days are, I think are much more interesting. Um, just on the whole, getting to watch um, some of these more delicate things come into being. And, you know, it's not a it's not a fast thing. So if you're if you're here and you're hanging out and you're you're watching, you're engaging. Thank thank you, because uh, you know a lot of people like to watch the time lapse videos because <laughs> it's like immediate gratification, um, and the process doesn't work that way. probably be taking every one of these videos and turning them into one big uh, time lapse. That would be smart. Maybe next, maybe the next painting we can uh, third camera. Ooh, I think we have the ability. Third camera. Third camera taking a shot every few seconds for, until it's done. Be fun. from a farther vantage point. The only problem is I think most of those vantage points involve me being in the way at some point. Okay, and, uh, and you get to notice, you know, I've not, um, I've not done a whole lot here, uh, and yet you know the, the thumb is, is working pretty well, um, and you know we have a tendency to really uh, chase after all those little little details, um, and always you know this I mean, everyone I think knows this intuitively. Yeah, that that just doesn't have to happen for uh, for it to be successful. You just need the right bits of information, especially in a thing like a hand, which is very complicated. Um, focusing on those uh, the big, uh, the, the big value shifts and changes are is kind of always enough. And really, on a on a thing like the hand, which you know is a it's a very animated and moving part of us. I don't know that you want to get too detailed. Uh, I think it, then it can feel plastic and and just and just not alive. It's even in faces, you know, there's a certain point where I just stop because you know it's like no, that's not gonna it's not gonna produce any more value to the painting to to get it any more real. Um, it's, uh, it's good where it's, where it's sitting. I really need to get an extra brush solely for putting in the white back behind. All, all the other brushes are kind of dirty. Not pure in the same way that this is. It's excessive, I know. 
Yeah, let's see, even that pulls a little bit of that. So I'll need to come in with some cooler colors to try to. Work around. Because I mean, if I'm if I'm honest, when I look at the thumb, you know, I see, you know, I see the major players, but I, you know, I don't I don't see much more. Um, I don't really I can't even really make out a nail. Um, And it's a little bit of kind of this pink reflected light on the bottom here, which I'm gonna I'll try to get in. That quickly drops off as I you know as I go to the right. Um, the highlights, if there is a highlight, the lightest part is you know kind of right here, so I can add a little more light um, up on this part of the thumb, but. It, you know that quickly drops away and it, it gets very ruddy quickly I feel like it kind of turns a little more bluish uh, as it goes up just, just small things all right uh, I, I think I've got uh, those, those colors in place so I'm gonna take you know, this little, little buffer and just kind of work out some of the more rough rougher areas um, One of the things to keep in mind too is I, I have the luxury of knowing uh, where this painting is going to go. Um, and it's going to be 20 feet in the air. Uh, and you know, yes, I want to do an exceptional job at depicting uh, the imagery. Uh, but at the same time, uh, 20 feet is 20 feet. Uh, it's going to be hard to see this. so. From a, from a distance, you know, is, is it going to work is, is a good question. Um, so I think I like that thumb. Um, I don't know how much more, if anything, I really need to change about it. For it to be, uh, you know, good and working. When in doubt, if I do have some doubts, I take my hand mirror. And if you don't have a hand mirror yet, I definitely suggest you you get one and take a quick look at what you've done uh, in a hand mirror and just say and see okay is this working is this um, then if it is then you know you can keep moving if there's something that bugs you then you know uh, jump in and address it All right, um, this will, this will be a fun one. Uh, the index finger here, we've got some uh, some highlights and a nice reflection in the uh, nail bed, um, and it's very pink. And I think this will probably seem excessive at first, but I'm gonna put um, you know this mixed color down that I um, I mixed on day one as kind of one of my redder. Uh, I think it just up against the light, you know, all that white is bouncing around on it um, and just really creating uh, this, this color that is so, so, so pink. Um, it seems like it falls off pretty quick. It's a little more redder on the shadow side, but you know, I, and I've got that. I've got kind of a mid range red um, so I'm going to begin kind of putting that in and we'll probably have to add a, a harder shadow line there uh, the, the nail bed you know I can make out a little difference but not much uh, so I'm going to kind of go across here with it and then we're going to drop that uh, intense highlight down on top and, and for this, I'm I'm gonna grab uh, near pure 
white. And I'm noticing that the highlight starts the brightest at the, the edge of the nail and then kind of decays. So I'm gonna just do the same thing with the brush. I'm gonna start here. And I'm just gonna pull, let it, kind of let up and let it decay. Um, we'll leave that there. We'll see if we wanna keep it. Um, never know. I wanna do something different. Uh, and there's still a lot of reflected light on this finger as it goes into each finger bone. Uh, this one's one's catching the most light. It's still pretty reflective around down here. Um, does some funny things around there and then you know, we can carry it up a little further. Um, I think it's even lighter than that. I don't want to use too much more white because I want to keep the color. You know, you hate to lose all the really uh, beautiful color. Um, kind of looking down the rest of the finger. It looks like it has about that color. Um, I think the fingers may be looking just a little. I'm gonna take um, just some of my maybe pure white and come up, bump up next to it, to soften it um, just a little bit. And that shadow is a little dark under there. Um, where it's touching. It's a lot warmer as well, so I'm gonna change that up to, because even in a, in a place like this, you know, yeah, you've got a shadow, but the shadow is really a little light passing through this warm, kind of blood-filled, transparent part of the finger, and, you know, this is the way it's gonna look. Even this edge, while dark, is still a little darker, is still just very red. Um, you know, all the way up into this side. Um, I probably haven't pushed that highlight enough. Um, or even the, the middle of the finger. And I can, since I've got a little bit of this on here, it seems like, you know, there's a little bit of, at the knuckle, a little darker, so I can just hint. You know, these are just hints. I'm, I'm not trying to paint every fold of the flesh. Um, you know, that's why. We have, if, we, we, if we want every fold, we have cameras. We have things that can capture everything, you know, as, as a painter, um, you know, capture the parts that are important. It's kind of critical. Uh, beautiful passages, um, and let uh, let the mind's eye do the rest. You know, I think I I, I want to go a little over the top, so I'm gonna pull in a little more. Highlights. And the finger, the knuckle, and then kind of as it comes up here. Um, it's a little much, uh, but I think if I, if I knock it down some with the, the, the buffer brush, I think it'll be okay.
I, uh, I think I think I like that one. Um, between here to here, um, I, think I like how that's going. Uh, I might exaggerate the edge here just a tad. That's red. And maybe one more nice big dollop highlight kind of right there at the edge of the nail. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up a little bit and see that I feel like there's a little more light up here. And also traveling through. Just gonna lighten that up a little bit. Then there's some real areas that to me kind of look really pink through some of these. Yeah, yep, that was a good move. It was like cooler here, warmer here. Uh, I know I like that transition a little better. Um, feel feel a lot better about it. Okay, warning, getting getting sleepy. I'm mean, actually getting pretty sleepy, so uh, uh, we'll see if it's wise to paint while sleepy. <laughs> my, my judgment, see how quickly my judgment falls off. All right, again, same, uh, same sort of approach. Um, I liked that kind of red area here. It's still, that was a little too much. Oh, you know what I forgot? I missed. And I wanted to, to add was, um, a little bit of webbing here that falls into the light. Let's see if can I put that in. Let's see if it looks too weird or not. dark. I don't want it to be, uh, you know, exactly that dark. It is, it is very warm and red. Um, you know, but I'm kind of watching it come around here, travel up here just a little bit. You know, these are those which kind of decay up into there as well. Does it on the opposite side too? That's probably a little excessive. We'll get back to it. Um, as we did on the other side or on the index finger, kind of going back down. I still really like this uh, pink to engage the areas that are really right up next to the white cloth. You know, I've got my my friend here to work on some of these areas because you know as I look at the source, you know that that edge, that really light edge, comes right up there. And do a little shadow back there, so we'll make sure we. Add in. 
but it needs to look different. A little bit of blue. And it's also darker than the reflected light, so I'm going to just pull in a little bit of my black to make that little so it doesn't blend in. I think it's one of those clarity things. If, if we were to blend in with the, the finger there, then, you know, it would be, wouldn't be good. Kind of those important clarity moments. Neighbor is rocking out today. Um, working outside in the garage. So if you're, so if you're hearing like a, a blues line, um, that's where that's coming from. Here I think it's good to note that the nail is lighter uh, and it's, you know, we don't have to get terribly specific. Um, again, we're going to lose some of that. Um, if, if, we, if we get too specific too fast, we're going to lose, I just saw that one to, this to lighten some, so I uh, thought I would just put that there. Um, A bit lighter on the top here. Right here as well. And by the time it gets down to that bottom knuckle, um, you know, it's dark and red. And, um, up just some of this dark red that I see right up against here. Yeah, and, and seeing the live stream, the, I need to adjust the colors on the camera. It's not quite, it's not quite helpful. Uh, probably if you're looking uh, to see kind of some of the color matching and, and that's just something that changes throughout the day to Okay, back down this finger, see <clears throat> if some of those, see if we got some of those good, uh, enough of those good marks to really make this work well.
Yeah, there's some nice subtleties here in person that uh, that I'm enjoying from the kind of cools to the red of the knuckle. And, um, I fear um, it's not very represented in the uh, in the stream, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, but I like it. That's some time for me to get out the mirror. You know, and if I want, and I, you know, I might add just a little, you know, try not to overdo it. Um, but, you know, adding just a little bit of some of the, that kind of fleshy knuckle. Um, again, this is more of a hint and not an attempt to tell, tell all. highlight looking back and forth Ring finger. Everything going okay over there, Davis? Yeah. Okay. Cynthia said, saving to watch later while painting different sets of hands I've got started. And yeah, I like the color you went to, not red. Awesome. Thank you. Great to, great to have you. Welcome. And, uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, you know, for the, you know, the the hands, I, I realized I'm kind of, um, you know, and I get a little kind of lost in, in what I'm doing, just as as though like, oh yeah, um, everyone's still here watching. <laughs> uh, sometimes I get a little lost, so uh, if if I'm missing out on something, you know, please say. Uh, I was just kind of looking. Um, and there was a little bit in these knuckles that was kind of catching some of the light. And I thought I would jump in here and just add some of that um, that I, I felt like I was seeing kind of a plane, um, a plane to here and then a plane to here. And I just want to work, get a little more of a light edge on here. And, you know, it's really, it's amazing how how little you have to do in order for it to work. And skin tones are are that way. You know, these the variations are so tight, um, and you know it's it's really easy to overdo it. Um, so kind of kind of win it out. Uh, go go lightly and. Yeah, I don't really like that area yet. We're gonna, we're gonna have to come back and sort that one out. Those are those moments where I'm like, yeah, I don't. Uh... Uh, oh yeah, and uh, and Cynthia, if you, Cynthia, if you, when you get to your hands, when you're working on them, uh, and you are kind of watching the video or working together or, or what have you, um, uh, feel free to drop a question in the comments and uh, you know I will see it and as soon as I get a chance I'll I'll answer back if you're if you're feeling stuck or something you know just giving you a little bit of trouble be happy to help it's uh, sometimes it's easier to um, rather than to kind of prepare for all all the things that might happen or have a good answer right now for the way to do something. 
um, but just having a problem to solve is really helpful because um, they're like, oh yeah, well this is this is an approach you know someone can take to try to get around that hurdle. Um, so that it helps. So you can feel free to drop a specific question, um, even at a, a later date. kind of painted out unintentionally some of the structure that was really needed there. You know, this kind of extends up a little higher, um, a little more to the right, uh, and, um, that, you know, that faces and hands, you know, there's this, there's so much, uh, to, to wrestle with, to, to get right. Um, so, you know, don't, don't get too sad if it's, if it's not going exactly like you'd like it to. Remember drawing is probably the first issue, a value be the second. Uh, I feel like this highlight extends just a little higher than I have it. Um, you know, when I'm looking at the anatomy, so I'm gonna, but then, you know, there's a big, I feel like there's a big change from you know, this uh, bone all the way down to the bone, the nail bed. Uh, there's a, you know, if I were to just abstract it into one line, you know, I'm really seeing that, um, that difference coming out. A little more, a little more there too. Uh, can I take it off? No, Amazon. Oh. Does it look like a chair? Uh, I, don't, I don't think it was coming from them anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I ordered a chair. That's exciting. Um, you know, I do spend a lot of time painting, as you might imagine. And so, like, just thinking about, you know, how do I, how do I sit better, better posture, better orientation for my hips, yada, yada, yada. Didn't anticipate having to think about these things in my 40s. Yeah, the uh, the studio kind of overlooks the the street side of the house, so we kind of see when packages come, and we're we're, we're not necessarily the neighbor neighborhood watch, but we do get to see the comings and goings. So, Fingers just getting a little too wide there, because and so these are the those moments where you know I'll take uh, a little bit of you know some of my my shadow color to help draw. See that just wasn't quite dark enough, so there we are um, to get this line a little more clear. And there is a nice warm, very warm shadow on both this side of the finger, extending back into those shadows. And then, you know, down below it as well here and kind of around this side. Just 
trying to remember not to overdo it. Um, you know, yeah, there's, a, there's kind of some important parts to be sure, but you know, not, not doing any more. Did you open our Amazon? I didn't open your Amazon. <laughs> you opened your Amazon. Yeah, it's tough. But again, I don't need. <laughs> Next year. I think uh, no one tell my my daughter. I believe the Elsa wig is in ours. If there was, uh, I believe, was yes, there was yeah, 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 yeah. I believe it's the the uh, Elsa wig. Well, as you can imagine. Do you, have you already answered some of these questions? Uh, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't Take seen them. the uh, states again. Thank you, Ooh, I'm resting at the moment. Just a question down when I get to mine. Your, oh, your pace is what I'd like to match right now. How many different brushes are you using? Yeah, um, I will, I will re reveal. Here's, here's everything. Um, so, uh, I don't have mineral spirits in the studio because I don't have a good ventilation sh system. So uh, what I do have is just a handful of flats. Uh, this kind of they're, they're almost filberts, uh, some, uh, but they are uh, Utrecht. There's their their two thirty nine series, um, and uh, yeah, this is kind of all I'm doing. You know, I had this bigger brush for laying in some of these bigger passages. Uh, these smaller um, flats to kind of lay in um, some of the passages here in in the fingers, but really trying to avoid the liner. You know, I kind of have one liner that I use when needed. Some of these, you know, some pretty intense shadows on the edges of these fingers. You know, the light's really falling right on top of it, um, and then the little buffer just to kind of help me uh, buff out or smooth off some of the uh, transitions that need it. Uh, so that that's all that's in in operation right now um, and uh, I guess I had one more that uh, is, is kind of my background color brush for the the white fabric um, where, where I felt like I needed you know a few uh, adjustments so yeah hope that's helpful Simon says hi hi Simon Simone Simone Simon Simon oh. S-I-M-O-N-E Simone uh, I, I don't know since I, since I can't see, so I'm just going to say whatever you say goes. <laughs> I'm sorry if your name is Simon or Simone, and if it's not either of those, please let us know. Um, and uh, so I will, uh, I will very dim diplomatically avoid saying the name. Uh, <laughs> thanks, uh, Svias. So uh, hi, good to, good to hear from you. Welcome. Uh, if you have questions, definitely let me know. I'd be glad to help. Glad to have you. to be like an announcer or oh yeah yeah try to get everyone's names right yeah yeah that would be really tough obviously as we have seen and i would not be the best i think kind of depending on your uh like if you if you had a lot of education in um multiple different languages uh and you could kind of see some of the root mm -hmm. oh kind of like the spelling bee champions yeah you know when you know like uh all of like oh well the way you know these letters go together probably germanic in origin or uh you know whatever it is and then, then you're saying okay well that probably is pronounced this way um that sort of that sort of skill set i i don't have myself. 
Cynthia says it is. I only use oil, no thinner huh. as well. Yeah. Uh, very, I mean, I have some thinner out, but you know, I usually I find the paint moves quite well on its own. Uh, and only when I'm trying to work fast, big passages, uh, am I using some of that, that thinner. So yeah, I think sounds like we, uh, we work very similarly, Cynthia. Thanks, David, for being on the thread. Appreciate it. Someday, maybe we'll rearrange everything and make more sense. Just about there, um, you know. I'm I kind of uh, avoided a break. You know, that was we got started only. You know, the lover. Well, I don't know. We're, we're approaching three hours ago, so I'm definitely feeling it. Um, but we're nearly done, so we're gonna see it through. We'll see if I can. Uh, Ruin, ruin a few passages uh, before, before I go. Seeing some things I want to do. Not sure how it'll go. So I'm, I'm mixing up a little bit of a of a gray because um, I feel like. I want to bring in the pinky just a little bit. So I'm and you'll you'll also notice, I mean this this is uh this is such uh like textbook. <laughs> like uh, you know, I'm I'm picking and choosing the detail I want to include and not to include. So you're looking at uh the picture you're seeing on the video feed is is my source material what i'm currently working from but you know I, I, yeah i've i've chosen a different way for the drapery to lay back behind because you know it's like oh, i was just too busy um and so you know you're you're always as a painter you're always making those type of types of decisions where um you know yeah i didn't didn't necessarily need it to be perfectly this perfectly that um and it may benefit the painting that it's not. I'm just going to kind of bump in a little bit into this. Using some of the kind of black color. Same for, for up here. Just barely working into that edge. Uh, you know, my stroke is just kind of budding into the finger, as well as what I'm working behind to try to create, you know, I wanted to bring that line in a little bit um, and, you know, was able to do so. Yeah, I'm seeing. Oh, it's the Italian way. Of the name of Simon or Simone, which room doesn't end. It's one of those. Uh, <laughs> the, there is any time into the painting that you feel you can put the reference away and say, like, I got this. Mm, mm. Uh, 
Uh, I, I probably don't ever put it away. Um, and, you know, that's, that's a great question because I've never really thought about that. Um, I usually never put it away, um, but after a while, like I'll be looking at it and you know, something kind of bugs me and I, f I feel like, you know, not really, and I've really never thought about this b before, but um, in those moments, I feel like it should be doing something different. And then I glance at the source material and it is doing something different. Um, and I'm like, oh yeah, of course, of course that was a problem area. <laughs> it's like, I, so something was already, you know, kind of speaking. Um, and, and so, no, I don't, uh, but you know, I, uh, I'm constantly saying kind of internally, you know, uh, what, what's working, what's not, um, what, what, uh, needs another step, what needs, um, what can I do now to improve uh, this area? It's like something is feeling funny um, and I'm not really looking at the source material. I'm just looking at the hand. It's just uh, because, because it, it is standalone, you know, um, at some point um, it's, it's gotta be by itself. Um, the, the viewers who look at these paintings are never going to see my source image. Um, and, and so, is the painting working of its own accord? Um, and so I think that's more of what I ask rather than putting it away is like, you know, is, is the painting working? And those, and the reason I leave it out and I continue to leave it out is like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm encountering passages that just don't feel right. Or, um, you know, are, there's, there's something amiss and then it's like, yep, let's, uh, let's jump into that and figure that out, solve that one. Um, you know, getting out the liner here, uh, because I was like, I, that, that edge, that was, that was kind of one of those moments where I was like, it just feels like it's just needs a little bit of an edge. And in looking at the source material, there is one, not as much as I've, uh, put on necessarily, but you know, there, there, there is one, um, I'm going to get out the mirror and I just kind of glance back at it and also imagine it, uh, you know, 20 feet in the air, uh, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate place of the painting is going to sit about 20 feet in the air. Um, so it'll be, uh, it will be able to be seen, but I want to make sure that I'm including enough, uh, really strong value shifts and, uh, you know, good, good color. Uh, in order for that to communicate that, that far away. Good questions. Thank you. Um, you're, you're helping me be, uh, better, uh, by explaining it. So, so thanks. And sorry for the name that I botched, the botched name. But I tell ya. Tell ya. Yeah, I spent, uh, I spent uh, a lot of time in Umbria. Uh, in the kind of mid 2000s and uh, it, was, it was quite nice really really treasured that time a lot okay I'm gonna take a little more uh, color uh, well I'm gonna bring this highlight down a little bit more I mean it's it's pretty bright here and so I'm gonna or light I should say I should use some better terminology. I'm gonna make it a little lighter, um, but I also think it carries down a little further. And so I kind of do the same thing, carrying down. This is what I said when I'm like, let's see if we can ruin it. So, uh, <laughs> um, and just bring this down a little bit more. Uh, I felt like it was lighter than I had it and that this might help it's always a little bit of a gamble though, you know, really suddenly dropping in, changing something that, you know, for the most part really was already working. You know, I, I probably no one would have ever looked at it and been like, that's, that's not right or that's not working. So, um, 
get just a little bit there. So I think that's if that's lighter um, and I hinge it really well right here, then we'll see the arm go here and then take off down this way on that uh, wrist hinging uh, hinge point. Halloween costumes are partially here and the kids are going to be so excited. I don't, they don't know yet though. They just got home. They just got home from school. Hey buddy, um, you should uh, ask mom for your package. I don't see it. Let um, me see if there's a package downstairs. Ask mom if there's a package. You'll, you'll probably want to open it. Check it out. I just heard feet running swiftly away. Yeah, I should probably give him both packages so he knows. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, David. They're in two different places. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to take my like my buffing brush here, and I'm just going to work kind of across the surface and, and follow the form um, a little bit. Uh, you know, there's there's some you know some variations that are are happening here and there that you know are really okay, uh, and I I like if the the mark is broken up some because sometimes it uh you know without you know a careful desperate rendition of every vein and um bone and muscle uh you know you can get some of those effects um naturally just with you know how the how the brush stroke ended up and so i'm uh, I try not to do too much. I just want to let some of the imperfections kind of naturally um, bring about some of that anatomy. Um, did you get it, David? All right, that's good. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm kind of okay with that now. I was, um, if anything, you know, what I might do is bring in the, uh, David, would you grab the door? I don't know how. It's closed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No, you're good. You're good. No, no, thanks. That's all I need. I mean, I could, I, it's not like fully latched, though. Okay. So uh, Halloween costumes arrived today, so. Kids are going to be super pumped. Um, so that shape, and I, I want to... Kind of work into here as well. This is fairly dark. Um, shadow back here, but I feel like the more I make some clarity right around the hand and the wrist, um, the better off it'll be. I feel like it was just a little too unclear. Um. Really hitting the home stretch here, so, um, you know, thanks for hanging in there today. I 
And I'm not sure if tonight uh, my skin tones are getting a little tacky. So I'm not sure if it'll be tonight or um, if I'll aim for uh, tomorrow sometime. Uh, well, if it is, it'll be early, earlier in the day to uh, do the last bit of, of skin tones. Uh, I've got uh, jo Joseph, Joseph's bearded face. Here's my Elsa wife. Oh, wow. Looks so nice. <laughs> you look so good. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. That's great. That's great. Beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of being gentle with this so then it doesn't get all messy. Halloween. Okay, yeah, that's so then, that's so that's a really good plan. Nice. Yeah, that's a really good plan. You have to be very How gentle. About this? When I'm done with Halloween, I can wear this again to school. Oh, you're gonna wear it to school? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Someday. Okay. After after Halloween. It's so beautiful. Yeah. You're, you look so nice. Do you get to dress up for school? Or did, you... did you know which next Halloween I'm gonna be? What? I'm gonna be on the first for I, I'm gonna be on a after Elsa and then I'm gonna be Moana. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to get a lot of wigs. Yeah. I saw Moana hair at the store. I I saw Anna Anna dress uh -huh. and in a package and then and then then there's the Elsa dress that was in a package. Wow. And then there's white white Elsa dresses out of the package. No, well, it's my daughter being Elsa for Halloween, and you know what? That's probably a great time to just <laughs> go ahead and wrap up the day. Um, if uh, if you have one last question, I'll, I'll I'm going to give you uh, a, a second or two to to type it in. Um, I'm going to just touch up a few areas, and then um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll take a break. I'm not sure, uh, kind of depending on, on how things go, whether uh, I'll, I'll drop back in tonight or not. Um, we'll see. So f drop off those last few questions if you got them. If not, uh, that's fine too. I wanted to get just a little bit of clarity down here. Doesn't need to be much. Um, just kind of hinting. Always so easy to overdo it so just you know barely barely telling the story letting the letting everything else uh you know do it do it on its own um all the heavy lifting that was done with the big uh, value shapes and planes all done that that should be really doing the big work um and so, um, question: Your favorite yeah. paintings, hand of old masters. Oh, uh, uh, oh. See, so here's where I'm gonna. Um. So uh, the the favorite, the, I think the most favorite hand of all time is uh, the one. <laughs> I don't even know the artist, uh, but it's the one on the cover of Gardner's Art Through the Ages. Um, I don't know, I might have to need some internet sleuthing to, uh, to find that, but, um, it's, uh, it's kind of a hand on a hip, uh, that's, it's quite beautiful. Um, but on the whole, uh, you know, love, 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 sergeant's hands. So, you know, in so sergeant's portraits, you know, some of the ways he depicted hands were just so beautiful. Uh, you know, just one of those things with like, j you know, he did it with just the right amount of information. So amazing. Um, so Sergeant, I mean, you know, uh, I was trying to think of some of the hands of, uh, you know, Caravaggio's work, uh, you know, very nice. Um, but you know, but if I think hands, if you ask me just hands, um, I would think of, of a couple, you know, I, um, I'm going to go three dimensional, um, you know, now that I think really giving it some thought and, um, uh, I, you know, 
think of uh, the, the really weighty heaviness of um, Michelangelo's David, uh, that hand that's, hang well, both hands, frankly, the way they hang so limply, uh, you know, kind of like this uh, uh, in, in their various forms. Uh, think of uh, Bernini and, um, you know, the his hands with, uh, like his his David and then um, his uh, uh, gosh uh, the, whereas the one where like the hand is um, uh, you know grabbing the thigh and it's like like the flesh is like around that so I mean his hands are amazing uh, so so yeah I think I think those are my you know big would be my big hand uh, inspirations so. Good question on a video about hands. I love that question. Thank you for that. All right, uh, let's see. I'm gonna type out a thank you and say, man, you are, are so awesome, all of you. Um, and, and Cynthia, we'll, we'll see you uh, next time. Hair, when it's done, I'll see. I'll put a belt on. Okay, I'll put a belt on. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah, Cynthia, I promise uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to um, yeah, the face and the beard and all sorts of fun stuff. Probably tomorrow is probably where we're going to end up. So uh, blessings, everyone, and we'll see you. Thank you.